Hi guys and welcome to the KXC Youth channel. It's going to be such a cracking one again. We have got Matt joining us, who's one of the over 18s for the games and we're going to be smashing eggs on our forehead. Then we've got Zulum who's doing the talk on Esther and then we're going to be finishing up with Alice and Abby. Alice is setting the challenge and Abby is doing the prayers and she's got a special message for you guys. So can't wait for what we've got in store this week and I'll see you soon. Hope you enjoy. Bye. Hi, I'm Hannah obviously. And I'm Matt. And we're doing the game today. The game is very simple. It's egg roulette. We've got some questions here. That's some eggs. And even if we get the question right before the other person, we have to smash the egg on our forehead. If the egg is a smashy egg and it's not hard boiled, then you do not get the point even though you got the question right. It's boys versus girls, the same as every week. Are we ready? Abu, in the Disney movie called Aladdin, is which animal? Wait, Three, what does two, that mean? One. Crocodile. Monkey. Because I got it right, if this egg is a hard boiled egg, then I will get the point. If this egg is a soft egg, then I will not get the point. I will move my hot chocolate. Ready? Hard boiled egg. I can't believe you just threw it at him like. <laughs> So mean. What is also known as soccer? Three, two, one. Football. Football. Who was fastest? I, I feel think. like I feel like it was me. I think it's definitely this one. Okay. You ready? Three, two, one. Oh, that was the wrong choice right there. Ah, how could you do this? <laughs> Amazing. You've got an eggy forehead now. No points to Wait, I got 1989 is the album of which singer? Three, two, one. Um, Kylie. I can't even, my mind's blank to be honest. Tay Tay, obviously. Oh, Taylor Swift. Oh, okay. Oh, I'm happy about that. So you got the question right. Oh, wait, for me. I swear I just wrote two questions anyway. Ah, uh, it's going to make it any better, it's still egg. <laughs> that was a hard boiled egg, by the way. Which country has the Uzbekistan. world's tallest building? Three, two, one. I think it's Dubai. It's Dubai. No, that's the city. No. The country. You said which country? Oh. Saudi Arabia. Is that right? Yeah. Oh, no. That means you get an egg. I can have an egg. Dun, dun, da, da, da. I will also use the last question. Are we ready? Uh -oh. <laughs> what is the elevation spell called in Harry Potter? Three, two, one. Spell it off. Even the How do you not know this? Okay, so does that mean I have to have an eggnog? Because I got it wrong. I think so. I've kind of lost the plot bit. Oh, well, me too. <laughs> do you want to pick one? There's, there's only two. You can't, you can't go wrong. Hi. It's your egg. All right, guys. I've got a bad feeling about this one. She's been getting all the, all the good eggs. Oh, again! <laughs> Why did I do it so hard? <laughs> this is a great game, guys. For you. <laughs> Michael Jordan is famous for what sport? Trainers! No! Basketball! I want to answer. Three, two, one. Oh, that went flying. <laughs> guys, that is a wrap. I've actually lost track of who's won, so I'll watch the video and make sure somebody else announces it. Hello everyone. Uh, if we haven't met, it's lovely to meet you. My name is Zulum uh, and I'll be sharing with you from the book of Esther this morning. I know this is the teaching series we're on and it's lovely to be with you today. Um, welcome to my attic. This is my bedroom, my house. Ceilings are quite low here. I'm trying to do my best with the lighting, so bear with me. Um, so as you know, we're going through the book of Esther currently, and the book of Esther is a, I think you'd agree, a very interesting book. I certainly enjoyed reading it. Uh, firstly, it doesn't mention God by name, which means that we have to see how he's working behind the scenes. Uh, and we learn that he's ever present throughout his use of Esther 
and Mordecai throughout this story. Um, I believe this story really does reveal some of God's heart um, for his people. And again, like I only said last week, uh, the Bible is a jigsaw and this again re reveals just a part of that jigsaw. But of course, you need to continue to read various books of the Bible to understand the entirety of God's heart and his story. So I'm just going to read uh, one verse for us today uh, that, that I want to speak on. And that's in Esther chapter 4, verse 14. So Mordecai is talking to Esther. Uh, he's just learned of Haman's plot to uh, eradicate the Jewish people in Persia. Uh, and he says to Esther, so she's obviously queen. Uh, at this point, she was made queen by the king of Persia. And Mordecai says to her, for if you remain silent at this time, relief and deliverance for the Jews will arise from another place. But you and your father's family will perish. And who knows? but that you have come to your royal position for such a time as this. For such a time as this. So just to read on a bit further, this is Esther's response to Mordecai's request. Then Esther sent this reply to Mordecai. Go and gather all the Jews who are in Susa, which is the capital of Persia at that time, and fast for me. Do not eat or drink for these three days, night or day. I and my attendants will fast as you do. When this is done, I will go to the king, even though it is against the law. And if I perish, I perish. So Mordecai went away and carried out all of Esther's instructions. So here you have call and response. Mordecai has questioned Esther and said, perhaps you've been appointed queen for just the time as this so you can save the Jewish people. And Esther has realized this call uh, and, and has stepped up to the plate. And she's um, done what she needs to in this moment and said, look, I will go to the king and beg on behalf of um, the Jewish people in order to save them so that they shall not be eradicated or murdered. Um, and I believe the message in this is that God is always at work, right? We just need to tune in and be obedient to his calling. Sometimes we don't know why God puts us in certain situations, but if we're attuned to his heart and his spirit through talking to him through prayer, through asking the Holy Spirit to come and abide with us, then God can use absolutely anything. Perhaps it's a, a, a sign that he'll give us. It's an image. It can be a dream. It can be through other people as well uh, that we can learn of what God wants to do through us. Um, so I think our posture in times of um, strife, perhaps such as this, when we don't really know exactly what's going on, but we know that we are in a position is just to put our hands and say, use us, Lord. Use us, Lord, for your glory in one way, shape or form. Use us to give you glory, to deliver your people and to bring justice to the earth. Just to give you a personal story. So I've just finished my final term as president of the uh, London School of Economics Students Union. And at that time, I had a really privileged position by leading and representing all 12,000 students at the institution. And of course, as a black man, um, I uh, suppose have a unique position because I'm the first black man to be president of the Students Union. Um, and uh, I was getting loads of questions after the death of George Floyd as to what LSE could do to improve the situation for black students and black people at the institution. Um, so I had loads of great conversations with the vice chancellor, which is the head of the uh, university and a lot of senior managers within LSE to talk to them about making positive changes at LSE in order to better improve issues of race. I also made some donations to bail funds to help out protesters in the United States who are fighting for justice and fighting for equality. So again, that's just an example as to how I've managed to use my platform um, to fight for the oppressed and to, to, to support the push for justice. Um, so yeah, I'll just give you some time now to think about ways in which God has positioned you to stand up for justice and to stand up for what is right. Challenge of the week! Your challenge this week is to fast and pray for someone or a cause that's important to you that you want to see change in. I'm going to pray now. Um, so do whatever to make yourself feel, feel comfortable. If that's closing your eyes, putting your hands out, that sometimes helps me when I'm feeling distracted. <clears throat> God, I thank you for Zillam's message. I thank you for the stories of where he used his influence to help others. And I pray that we'd do that too, that we would use the positions and the places you've p uh, placed us in to help others, to stand up for them, to speak out for them. 
and I pray for us as we're all leaders. I pray that um, you would help us to lead well. Would you rise up leaders amongst all of the youth at KXC and beyond? Help us to step into all that you're calling us into. Amen. Amen. That's all we've got time for today. We've come to the end of our service. Um, we look forward to seeing you next week. Apart from, I won't see you next week. This is my last week at KXC. Um, I've absolutely loved leading the younger youth here and working with Hannah and working with you all as well. So have a fabulous week um, and I look forward to hearing all that you get up to through Hannah. See you later. Bye. Is that all right?